Hello class, and welcome to another fantastic edition of Photoshop and After Effects for... I don't even know what the hell the name of this class is, actually. What is it? Somebody tell me. I really don't know. Okay. Anyway. For class, we had to make something like this. Um, get the two logos that kind of bop in. We have uh, the rack focus and the ball spinning in the background. Look good? Excellent. I'm going to actually put all this stuff into a folder. I'll call it archive. A -R <laughs> carve. There it is. I'm going to take all of that, put it away. So we can start freshly. Okay. So first things first, we're gonna um, we're gonna go make some things. I'm gonna go into the Illustrator files, and if I remember correctly, the Los Angeles Lakers needs to be treated in Illustrator. So we'll go ahead and do that. It's very similar to Photoshop. Um, way we're going to do that. We'll open it up. Oh, if it will let me. This has happened last time too. I don't know why it does that. I'm going to reset my workspace. I think what it is is um, I'm working on a couple of monitors here and for some reason it doesn't like that. I'll try to open it. Open up, be a good little DPS. No? Ah, there we go. Okay, so um, hitting Command A, which selects all, Command C, which copies it, and then I'm going to go New. I'm going to drag this window up, go to Film and Video, HDTV. 1080, and hit Command V. Holding my Shift key down, I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger, right? Great. And I'm gonna file, save as, we'll call that Lakers.ai, and let's see, where did I put this? Oh yes, it's on the desktop. Uh -huh, uh, there it is. Illustrator. Perfect. Save it right there and we're good to go. Oh, you're going to get this little options dialog. Just hit OK. And then I'll close out of that. And now I'll open up After Effects. And we're going to start from the very beginning. I'll call this um, you know, I'll call this new composition Tim Willett show opener final. Why not? I'll make this, uh, let's make it 10 seconds long. Not too long. Ooh, this is 24 frames a second. I'll switch that to 2997. I was doing some graphics for a film, so it was in 24. All right, uh, let's hit OK. Great. We're off to a great start. Second thing is what we're going to do is we're going to import some files. So I'm again going to my desktop, at my show opener, I'm selecting my Illustrator files, PSD files, video, AE files, texture, and PDF files. Oh, not the exports. I'll go ahead and open that. It's created all those folders for me, which is fantastic. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is, oh, it's having a hard time importing some things. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is um, I'll drag a couple of these illustrative files up there. We'll take the Celtics, and we want to put the Celtics, we'll put the Celtics over here, 
Again, I can make sure that I have my title and action safe right there. That looks pretty good. I have my resolution at quarter because things are going to get wild pretty quickly. I'm going to take my Lakers, put it over to the other side. I'm going to bring that down a bit. It seems that I got a little excited about the size of the Lakers right there. Looks good. If you want to make sure that they're lined up, you can always hit Command R and drag a guide down. Ooh, look at that. That's spot on. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, so you have these two things going on. Um, what we want to do, though, is we want to... Um, we're going to keep them... Well, we want them 3D. We want to make sure that our 3D viewer is on classic 3D on the main one. Then we're going to go ahead and treat these separately. I'm going to right click on them, go to pre-compose, and it says Celtics AI comp. I'll just put Celtics, hit OK. I'll double click on that. And simply what I'm going to do at this point is right click on it, go to create, create shapes from vector. Once I do that, I have some outlines. I'm going to delete the original AI. I'm going to make it 3D, and then I'm going to switch from classic 3D to Cinema 4D. I'll hit Option R. I'm going to rotate that. Is it the Y? I always forget. Yeah, it's the Y. The Y, 35 degrees. Another thing I want to do, so I'm dropping down the menu again, is I'm going to want to change some of the geometry. So I'm going to extrude, let's say I go about, I don't know, uh, we'll go about 50. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks all right. Go about 50 right there. Another thing, just to add some depth to it, I'm going to go to Layer, New, Light, and I'm going to add, not a spotlight, but we'll do a point light. Hit OK, and that's going to just make things look nice. I may at this point go to a couple different views, uh, two views horizontally. Uh, that looks good. I guess I can do that. I'm going to find my point light. That's where I'm confused. There it is. So I'm going to bring it in a little close. I want to get some edge lighting right there. Oh, that's good. I like the edge lighting, but of course I don't like that. We, we can't see the front, so I'm going to hit Command C, Command V. I've made another point light. And I'm going to bring one around front here, just so we can see what's going on. Well, that looks much nicer to me. So I got that back edge light. It's kind of... Yeah, that looks pretty good. So it's not a two-point light setup, but I do have a key light and a fill light right there, which looked quite nice in my opinion. Let's go back to that main comp. And just for the hell of it, I'm going to turn it up to full for a second, see how that looks. Ooh, I think that looks very nice. All right, we'll go back down to a quarter. All right, so let's uh, repeat kind of the same thing to the Lakers one. Let's go to... Uh, Hell, pre-compose. Uh, call it Lakers, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to right-click on Lakers. Go to Create, Create Shapes from Vector. Delete the original Lakers. Uh, make sure we're on 3D. We're in Cinema 4D, and then I'm going to, um, well, Option R. Rotate that on the Y, 35 degrees, but this time negative 35 because we're facing the other way. And again, go to the geometry and I'll type in 50 right here to extend that. And it's not 3D until we add some lights. I mean, it is 3D, but it doesn't look very good. That looks nice. We'll switch to two views. Let's bring in an edge light. 
that. Yeah, that looks nice right there. Whenever you're lighting, even in real life, you always want to do the backlighting and the edge lights first, and then your key. That's a little pro tip for folks who are in um, production as well. It's always a good way to go. All right, that key looks pretty good. Let's see. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, let's go back to the main one. I'll switch that to full just to see how that looks. Ooh. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, next, next thing we're going to do is throw basketball court on there. I'm going to hit com option R. I'm going to rotate that on the X, 90 degrees, oh, like so. Making sure, of course, that it's on globe, uh, world axis. Bringing that down. Uh, I'm gonna hit option S and scale the shit out of that thing. Let's make that pretty big. And I think I may just bring it up right about there. Yeah, that looks good, right there. We're getting there. Um, I'm going to switch to two views, go to a quarter, uh, I don't like this top view, I'm actually going to, ah, there we go, that looks good. Do I want it right in the middle? Yeah, why not? I'm just going to keep that right in the middle like that. Uh, we also need a background, let's do that. So, I'll put this background in, uh, make it 3D, I'm going to put that way back. Option S, and this one we're really going to scale quite a bit. That's right on the edge. Yeah, that looks good. There we go. Okay, what else can we do here? Oh yeah, I remember. Now we're going to bring in the ball. I'm going to throw it back there, of course. Um, i got my texture, my basketball. I'm going to make that 3D, put that right back here, and we're going to go over to Effects and Presets. I'm going to type in CC Sphere, and I'm going to drag that right onto the ball. Oh, threw it onto the Celtics logo. That was pretty cool. Hmm, maybe for next time, but what I meant to do was drag it right on there. There we go. Maybe I'll scale that a little bit. Option S. Make that a little bigger. See what happens. Okay. I think we're getting there. And then I'm going to do some rotations on this. Um, it's under effects. CC sphere and rotation. Not on the X. I want to do the Y. So I'll set a keyframe there, go to the end, 10 seconds, and then uh, rotate it 360 degrees. There we go. Let's see how that looks. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. All right. Um, next thing that we'll do is usually after I set the scene, I guess I go for either my camera or lighting. See, once once you start going into cameras and lighting, things will slow down exponentially. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to make them move in, right? So let's gonna organize these things. I want them to come in at about 10 frames. So I'm simply gonna highlight these, hit option P. Uh, I've come in at about nine frames going out deselecting. See, I just clicked on there and I deselected both of them. And then I'll just highlight the Celtics. I'll move that off. And this is really one of the reasons why... Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's undo that. It really came in at an angle. I did not want that. Okay, I wanted to grab the X and take it off. 
There we go. I'll actually switch to one view. Yeah, like that. That's the ticket. I'm going to throw a motion blur. And hey, kids, don't forget that we also need to toggle. Turn this on. So it's either on or off, even if you turn these ones on. So remember the two. Ooh, that looks nice. And one of the reasons I use the classic 3D is so we can get that motion blur. Um, we cannot get that in Cinema 4D renderer. Okay, there. And then, what the hell, I'll do the basketball from the top. Um, but we'll stagger it a bit, right? All right, I'm gonna hit Option P. There with the basketball. Go back about 10 frames. And I'm gonna use the easy in and out for this. Uh, I'll use actually easy in. So I'm gonna right click on this, go to keyframe assistant and ease in. And this is simply going to slow the velocity. Rather than it going from a start to stop, it's just going to get slow. Later we'll get into expressions where we can make things bounce and stuff, but we're not quite yet there yet. So that looks good to me. Okay. Then I think what we're going to do, since we've got all those movements in there, we're going to go to Layer, New, and Camera. I'm going to switch this to a 50 millimeter camera. And additionally, I want to make sure that my depth of field is enabled. Simply going to hit OK. So first things first, um, let's look at two views. And you can see that the Lakers and the Celtics are on one plane, and then we have the ball on another plane. What I want to do is I simply want to rack focus from the ball to the Celtics. Um, probably, I don't know. I'm going to say like two seconds in, I want to have the, the camera rack focus to the um, to the logos. So we'll hold focus on the ball for one second and we'll make it 115 and then from 115 to 2 we'll rack. All right, let's do this. So first things first, I want to go to camera options. I'm going to increase the aperture to, hell, let's do it 200 on each and the blur level to 200. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the camera. I'm going to hold down Command and click on the basketball. Right click, go Camera, Set Focus Distance to Layer. Ta-da! So right now what we're seeing, I'm going to go back to one view so you can see it. And we'll turn that to full so it's really clear. Right now we see the ball in focus. I'm going to set a keyframe for focus distance right there. And then I want to hold that there. So I'm also going to set a keyframe right there. And I can do that. I can add the current keyframe by simply clicking on this thing. That will give you a secondary one. I don't know the shortcut for focus distance. Does one exist? Probably. I don't know what it is though. Okay, so then at about two seconds I want it to rack focus to the logo. So I'm going to right click on that and I don't need to set a keyframe here because I've already set other keyframes, and whenever I change an attribute, it's going to set a keyframe automatically. And I'm just going to right-click, camera, and set focus distance to layer. Ta-da! So now, hmm. Okay. There we go. Very cool. All right. 
So after I've set up the lights and the camera and the movement and all that stuff, um, or actually the camera, I want to set up the lights. So I'm going to go ahead and go to layer, new, and uh, let's set up some lights here. I don't know what I'm going to do first. Let's set up some backlighting first. Yeah. Remember, set up the edge lights first or kind of the backlighting, if you would. Ooh, I kind of like that. That's nice. Um, I'm going to kind of copy, copy and paste some of this other lighting. And maybe, maybe what I'll do is also give some backlights to over here. Oh, didn't want to do that. Maybe I should lock down my layers, except for what I'm using. And I'll bring right on another one over here. I'm going to hit copy, paste. So let me copy, paste. Perfect. I'll move one back here. Well, that looks nice. I'm wondering if I should bring the intensity down on that left one. It seems a little much. Let's bring that down. Let's yeah. Okay, that looks good. So I kind of got my backlighting going on. Now I'll want to light up the fronts here. Um, copy, paste. I'm going to take another point line. I'm going to zoom out. Yeah, that looks nice. And copy paste. I'll do another one. So lighting is its own kind of thing. I would suggest learning about how to do a three point light setup. All right, so that's really intense. I, for some reason, we're getting some real intense specular highlights from those left ones there. I'm going to bring that in pretty close and then bring the intensity down. Too much though, apparently. All right. Um, so I have the lights, I think, where I want them set up. Uh, I'm going to make sure a couple things though, which I probably should have done in the first place, which is um, I want to make sure that they cast shadows. That's on there. Good. Cast shadows on. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. All right, so I copied and pasted them. I'm guessing that shadows are on all, all of them. Now I want to mess around with the actual um, other layers. So in the back, that video is kind of blown out. So what I'm going to do is go to that video, go to material options, and bring down the specular intensity and the shininess. Uh, that is not doing what I want it to do. I'm going to make sure it turns on shadows. Yeah, I'm not liking that backlight now. So you may find yourself tweaking the lights a bit. Yeah, let's get rid of that. There we go. That's looking much better. Specular intensity, shininess, no, ambient, no, it's just, it's not doing what I want it to. 
Well, in that case, I'm going to go over to my color correction and add a curve. Let's take a peek at that. I'll bring down the highlights big time. There we go. That's what I want. And bring the shadows down. That's looking much better. And for the hell of it, I'll increase the green. Oh, it's the wee bit. Not much. Okay, that looks pretty good. Bring down the intensity of point light in the back. You can see I'm really, you know, really struggling with this, this light setup, apparently. So I'm bringing that down even more. Apparently that light was really doing some damage there. That looks much better. Um, the other thing is I may want to cast shadows. So, turn that on. Mm, no, not on this one. Do I want to do that? Yeah, I think we're good with casting shadows on this one. I think we'll just keep it. Okay, so I believe, I'm pretty sure that was the tutorial. And then when you're done, uh, go ahead and render that out, and uh, you're good to go. All right, thank you very much. Bye.